DHRs, dear colleagues, this is my great pleasure to contribute uh, again to the Philatov Memorial Lectures this year. Even I am not able, as many of you, to meet uh, personally in Odessa. This uh, lecture was uh, sponsored by Paul Pharma Company. Here are my uh, financial disclosures. None of them is relevant to the topic of this presentation. I will speak about uh, myopia control update to this year. So the most uh, um, uh, updated information available now. So why we need to care about myopia? This is the first question. The reason, one of the reasons is that uh, we experienced in the recent years uh, a, a huge uh, increase in myopia prevalence, mostly in Asia, but also to some extent, as I will show you, in Europe. In Asia, it is named, it was named, it is still named the myopia boom, as you can see for, from the cover page of uh, Nature uh, Journal from 2015. Uh, showing many, many Asian uh, uh, um, people wearing uh, eyeglasses. So, what do we know about what happened in Asia? So, as you can see from this graph, uh, from the left-hand side, we see what happened and during uh, more or less uh, 70, 80 years. Uh, from uh, 40s of the 20th century to 2013 in places like Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea and Taiwan. And on the right uh, hand side, uh, you can see the graph from China, from Guangzhou. Uh, this is the, the Canton city, you probably is more familiar, the old name Canton of this, of this, of this place. And these graphs are quite similar. So they show that uh, during this period, there was a steadily increase in the prevalence of myopia in this part of the world, reaching up to uh, over 80% in some age group. As you can see, this is for the uh, population of 18 till 20 year olds. So uh, this, is, this is very unusual what happened there. Here we see uh, different parts of the world. This, is, uh, this uh, graph is taken from our study, epidemiological study, which was published uh, last year, as a matter of fact. And you can see in the, in the lower part of this graph, Asia, uh, this, this uh, uh, bars showing uh, different parts of Asia. We are probably more interested in Europe and what we can see from this graph, that the prevalence of myopia in, Euro in Europe, according to different studies, is about 40-45% in different age groups. And what is even worse, uh, there are some estimations showing that this uh, increase will, will be continued in the future, as it is uh, shown here at this graph, uh, which shows that, uh, of course, it's an estimation, it's a prediction. However, uh, it is predicted that it will, it will, uh, it will uh, go up until the year uh, 2050, as you can see here, in the number of both total myopia and high myopia. And it is estimated that the number of people with vision loss resulting from high myopia would increase sevenfold till 2050 and myopia would become a leading cause of permanent blindness worldwide. So this is very uh, horrifying. This is, this is, this is very uh, uh, important and significant message for us ophthalmologists. We know that the, one of the uh, consequences of myopia is a myopic macular degeneration. And it is, uh, 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 as it can, it is shown at this graph, uh, um, is again a pr prediction showing the increase in blindness associated with myopic macular uh, degeneration and visual uh, impairment uh, related with the same disorder uh, steadily increasing in next uh, years. 
Here we see uh, the same uh, problem showing the number of people in millions. When we compare the uh, number of people in millions uh, related blind or uh, visually impaired associated with the macular uh, myopic degeneration in uh, 2020 compared to 2050, we see that this is, this is uh, 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 more than doubled. So the second uh, real problem for us is the risk of high myopia. We are very much aware that the highly myopic eyes develop many pathological outcomes, which uh, make high myopia a major cause of uncorrectable visual impairment. Patho pathological outcomes include retinal detachments, myopic macular degeneration, staphyloma, myopic retinoschisis, which are currently difficult and costly to treat. High myopia is associated with increased risk of cataract and glaucoma, and the development of these pathological outcomes is not prevented by correction of the highly myopic refractive errors and is higher than with high myopic errors. Here I would like to show you some uh, uh, data from a recent uh, um, meta-analysis which was published last year in Investigative Ophthalmology and Visual Science. And uh, um, as you can see it, uh, um, th this graph shows the prevalence of myopic macular degeneration uh, related with a low, moderate and high myopia. And it is very clear that the high myopia is related with the very high, very increased prevalence of this complication. Again, uh, other complications. Here we see retinal detachment. So uh, again, clearly the risk increases with the, with the uh, uh, size of myopia. With the low myopia, we have uh, odds ratio uh, three times uh, with the moderate myopia eight times and the high myopia more than 12 times uh, uh, higher risk of retinal detachment. What about the cataract? Uh, well, um, it is again increased risk, as I mentioned. With the uh, low myopia, it's uh, 1.5. With the moderate myopia, 2.5. And with the high myopia, it's uh, 4.5. Uh, times higher risk of cataract related with the, with the uh, um, size of myopia. Open angle glaucoma, again, high, moderate and high myopia, they are related with nearly three times increased risk of open angle glaucoma. Here we see uh, the curves showing cumulative risk of visual impairment with increasing age per category of different axial length on the, on the left side and on the right side, it is a spherical equivalent. And, uh, well, sorry. And, and, and uh, it, it is very clear that with the, with the increased axial length, so the increased uh, um, size of myopia, the uh, cumulative risk for visual impairment is, is increasing again. And again, another study, uh, uh, systemic review and meta-analysis confirming this data uh, prediction model showing uh, the word in uh, 2050 and the uh, uh, increased number of people with blindness associated with the myopic macular degeneration compared to the number of people with blindness uh, in uh, 2000. Uh, so as we can see, this is a huge difference. So here are well, the, 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 the reasons why we should be aware about myopia, why we should care about it, and why we should try to stop it. So what to do? What we can do about that? Uh, I would like to start with a nice uh, meta-analysis which was published a few years ago in Ophthalmology Journal, uh, which uh, compared 16 interventions for myopia control in children. And this meta-analysis uh, uh, which is uh, still valid, uh, um, shown that the uh, um, approaches, strategies, providing the best benefit, so as you see, a clear effect, all with statistically significant effect, were high-dose atropine, moderate-dose atropine, and low-dose atropine. Uh, 
the strategies uh, that provided moderate effects were pyrenzepine. Pyrenzepine is not available anymore. It was only studied some years ago in, ex in, in some studies. And also keratology, which is available, peripheral defocus modifying contact lenses and peripheral defocus modifying eyeglasses recently, uh, recently introduced. So, however, uh, these uh, strategies are related with some limitations. For example, uh, uh, high dose atropine, atropine one percent, is related with some side effects well known. Also, keratology is related with some costs and complexity, and uh, some other approaches like uh, uh, contact lenses or uh, even eyeglasses are of limited availability and still are not available in many parts of the Europe. So here I would like to show you the uh, different, again, different uh, strategies and to uh, show uh, what we can expect to slow down myopia from these different strategies. So the, the best effectiveness is probably provided by the high dose atropine, as you can see it here. However, it is, it is, it is poorly tolerated by, uh, by kids and, of course, uh, parents. So it is, it is, it is rarely used. Uh, ma majority of doctors today use uh, low concentration atropine of a, a, a bit lower effectiveness, however, still quite effective. And then orthokeratology, as I mentioned, with some limitations, is again uh, uh, proved to, uh, to be quite well effective. And then uh, soft contact lenses and um, um, eyeglasses probably provide less effect uh, effectiveness because we know much less about these uh, strategies so far. They are relatively new. A report from American Academy of Thermology concluded that the use of atropine to prevent myopic progression is supported by level one evidence. Well, in the last two years, there were uh, two interesting studies. Uh, they were called LAMP1 and LAMP2 studies. Uh, you can uh, see them here, uh, showing the effectiveness of a different concentration of atropine. It was atropine 0.05% uh, versus other concentrations, uh, including 0.01%, which was uh, mostly used before LAMP study. And this study shown that the low concentrations of atropine reduce myopia progression along a concentration-dependent response. All concentrations were well tolerated without an adverse effect on vision-related quality of life, and that 0.05% atropine was most effective in controlling spherical equivalent progression and axial length elongation by up to nearly 70% over a period of one year. It was the LAMP1 study. So uh, this study uh, reported that 0.05% uh, atropine was few times more effective than 0.01% atropine, and LAMP2 study confirmed the effect after two years follow-up. Here we see on these uh, graphs uh, the uh, um, change in axial length uh, um, within the first year and different concentration and, uh, and the placebo and uh, the, 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 uh, the, the change in axial length was the highest in the group of 0.05% atropine. Another very important uh, uh, factor to be included in our, uh, um, in our treatment strategies is the role of time outdoors. It was shown that the increased time outdoors prevents the onset of myopia and that the increased time outdoors reduces the effects of large amounts of near work and parental myopia. And this is uh, well accepted today that we should recommend our children, I mean our, our patients' children, uh, both healthy and myopic, to spend more time outside, at least two hours per day, uh, should spend uh, um, to be exposed for the natural light. Uh, the important issue to be shortly discussed are different risk factors. So here you see some uh, of well-known risk factors for myopia uh, progression. 
like parental myopia, ethnicity, excessive use of near electronic devices, low light levels, what I just mentioned, low time outdoors, uh, uh, education, um, then high pressure educational systems, reading from close distance. Yeah, uh, I would like to say a few words about parental myopia. So there were, here we see, uh, again, a, a meta-analysis of different studies about the, uh, the link between parental myopia and, uh, and myopia progression. And it, it clearly showed that um, there is, a, even with one myopic parent, there is an increased risk of myopia versus no myopic parent. And this risk, uh, based on different studies, as you can see, in prospective cohort studies was uh, 1.5, in cross-sectional studies nearly two, and in case control studies uh, over two times uh, higher. Uh, for two parents versus no myopic parents, this risk is even uh, higher, as you can see, from two to nearly three times higher versus no myopic parents. So we are quite uh, uh, convinced that uh, obviously uh, uh, parental myopia is an important uh, issue. We should we should. Uh, Consider, and this is confirmed by many recent studies. You can see the study from last year uh, from uh, from uh, U.S. Association of Parental Myopia with higher risk of myopia among multi-ethnic children before school age. So not only Chinese, not only Asians, but also different other ethnicities like Hispanic, non-Hispanic, uh, white, and uh, African American children. Uh, so very very uh, different populations in U.S. And here, again, a study from, uh, from um, Asia, from, from Hong Kong, uh, more or less on the same uh, topic, uh, independent influence of parental myopia on childhood myopia in a dose-related manner. And this study was published also quite recently. So uh, this is to uh, show that we should think about children uh, of uh, myopic parents in a bit different way. We, probably, uh, we should probably uh, um, examine them earlier uh, and, and follow up uh, uh, more carefully than, than, than other children. Here is another interesting study which was published quite recently, uh, two years ago in the ophthalmology journal. This study showed that the reading distance, so the, the uh, less than 30 centimeters is a risk factor for myopia um, progression. Very interesting. Uh, so the, the sort of the condition or hygiene uh, of uh, uh, how our uh, how children uh, behave during reading is also important. Uh, and uh, finally, age of onset. It is well known from different studies that the that the risk of progression is uh, um, is related with the age of onset. And the, and the uh, earlier is the onset of myopia, uh, the progression is, 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 is stronger, finally, and, 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 and we, should, we should care much more about the children uh, uh, with the early onset of myopia. Well, at the end, I would like to, to show you some uh, recent recommendations. This is the uh, uh, paper which is freely available from internet. Uh, it is by uh, uh, American Academy Task Force on Myopia. I, I, I was the, the, the member of this group and uh, I also contributed to this uh, study, which is a very nice material uh, a summary of what is known about the control of myopia. And uh, another very interesting material uh, prepared by Europeans here, uh, published in European Journal of Ophthalmology, again, uh, free available uh, from the website of the journal. And this is, uh, mm, uh, this is uh, again, uh, it was prepared in a co cooperation with the International Myopia Institute. And as you see, already just after uh, two months uh, after publication, it was already downloaded by more than 10,000 times. So it seems that this is a very, very, uh, very hot topic and, and people uh, find it uh, very useful. So I would like to invite you to join also to our European network for myopia control uh, through the website here. 
uh, more than welcome, uh, and then we can we can uh, be somehow integrated. And at the end, I would like to also welcome you uh, to consider the Journal of Clinical Medicine. Uh, I'm one of the editors in this journal responsible for ophthalmology, and we have a few uh, special issues uh, which are scheduled for this year. We are more than welcome to, uh, to contribute uh, to this uh, journal. Thank you very much for your kind attention.